Hello guys and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be making acetyl acetone. Now it has been quite a while since my last video and I'm sorry about that, but I have been very busy specifically with school so videos will be coming out a lot slower. However, I do have a few more videos in this tetrazine series so they will be coming out eventually. As always, I would love to give a huge thank you to my Templar Solar patrons for their massive donation, so thank you very much. Okay, so let's get into the synthesis. Before I started the synthesis, I really wanted to get more ethanol out of the sodium methoxide, so I pulled a strong vacuum and I put it on high heat, but it still wouldn't dry. All it did was just tar up more and become more brown, so I just decided to move on. A slight oversight from this uh, distillation was that the sodium methoxide ended up bricking up which made it a real big pain for the next step, which was dissolving in ethyl acetate. So this is what it looked like after dissolving in ethyl acetate, this black, tarry, gross solution. It's supposed to be clear. The paper said that uh, the quality of the sodium methoxide greatly affects the yield. So uh, I hope that this doesn't affect it too much. Even with all this ethyl acetate, I still couldn't get all the sodium methoxide out. As you can see, there's a bunch left in this uh, flask. So I just destroyed using water and the water turns green. Not too sure why that is. So after the ethoxide and the ethyl acetate are mixed, I have to add the acetone right away because the ethyl acetate will actually start reacting with itself. So I have to add the acetone relatively quickly and it produces a lot of heat, enough for it to actually start boiling the solution. This is actually good because now I have to reflux this for about an hour. Now from here, the paper says that your reaction is supposed to turn brown which is good because mine did turn brown. However, theirs started out clear and you know, mine started out black. So I wasn't hundred percent sure at this point. However, as time went on, as you can see, the solution got very, very thick, which is also what the paper said would occur. So I started to gain more confidence that this was actually working. At this point, the solution started bumping very violently because my stir bar sucks, but at least the reaction was nearly done. So at this point I could turn off the heat and let it cool down. Now I do want to go over to what is happening right now. This reaction is something called a base catalyzed clase and condensation. In this specific reaction, we're using a ketone, which is the acetone, and the ester, which is the ethyl acetate. These two compounds react with each other in the presence of the base catalyst, which is the sodium ethoxide. This forms the sodium acetyl acetonate, and from there we can free base it into acetyl acetone. Now the reason why I had to add the acetone right away is because if I didn't, then the ethyl acetate would have gone through its own ester ester place in condensation. So going back to the physical reaction, it has now been cooled down overnight for about 12 hours. Now I can separate the solid from the liquid because our goal is to have the solid since that is our sodium acetyl acetonate. For this, I'm just gonna filter using a Buchner funnel. So here's what it looks like once I pulled off all the liquid and separated the solid. Okay, so here we are. I just dissolved up all the uh, sodium salt and as you can see, it is a nice red solution in this water, which I think is what it's supposed to be. So that's a good sign. So once all this is dissolved up, I'm going to add it to the ethyl acetate, which will hopefully pull the rest of the uh, acetyl acetonate out of this. And then I will uh, decant and separate the layers. And once the layers are separated, I can do the final extraction. Yep, so as you can see here, here's the water layer, here's the ethyl acetate layer. So now we're just going to separate the water layer as fast as we can, and we should be good. Okay, so now I'm gonna extract this with 70 milliliters of ether twice, and uh, I can just discard the ether layer. This is what the discarded ether layer looks like, and I will be recovering the ether because ether is quite valuable. Okay, so now it's time to freebase the sodium salt by acidification and then extraction with ether again. But this time the ether will actually have the acetyl acetone in it. Okay, so yeah, I can really smell the acetyl acetone. As you can see, it's acidic now, so that's good. It went from basic, neutral, to acidic. So I'm happy I caught all those points. So yeah, let's uh, extract with ether again. Now I'm gonna be using my two 1,000 milliliter separatory funnels. Yes, I have two of them. I accidentally got two of them once and uh, I couldn't return it, so I just was like, oh well. At least it's making my life a lot easier for this specific extraction. On another note, I split the rest of the ether that I have into four different uh, extractions, and each one is going to be 70 milliliters. So after each 70 milliliter extraction, you can notice the water phase getting a lot less yellow and more clear, which is good because that means that we are actually extracting our acetyl acetone. Okay, so I just finished the extractions. Uh, all my waste is in here, and uh, yeah, here's the ether. 
with all the extracted acetylacetone. So now I'm gonna dry it over probably some magnesium sulfate. And then uh, tomorrow I'll distill it and purify my acetylacetone. So it's the next day and I'm ready for the distillation. So I'm gonna be using a fractioning column because I am trying to separate ether from acetylacetone. And they do have like a nearly 100 Celsius difference in boiling point, but I mean, fractioning column will still make it slightly more pure with then without it, so I'm gonna use it anyways. So after distilling out almost all the ether, I transfer it to a smaller 100 milliliter uh, round bottom flask, and I now distill out the acetylacetone. I then collect the fraction that's between 130 and 140 C. Once I'm finally done, you can see the tar in the distillation flask. However, on the other side, you can see 19 grams of some slightly yellow acetylacetone. Thank you everybody so much for watching. This video was very fun to make, even though the uh, beginning with the sodium methoxide was a little uh, bumpy. Anyways, I will be making the uh, tetrazine ring for the next video, so hope you guys can look forward to that.